Installing SQL Server 2012 is a painless operation, although it's going to take you a little time. And rather than go through the process of making you watch things paint across the screen and so forth, I just took screenshots of the installation. So I'm going to show you here. Now, this is an installation onto a Windows 7 machine. I did that because most people who will be taking this class, I'm assuming, will be using Windows 7. Windows 8 looks almost exactly the same thing on the install. You can also install it on Server 2012, Server 2008, and so forth. But when you first put the media into the machine, you're going to see that little box pop up back here that says, you know, the setup EXE, are you ready to begin? You click that. The first thing you're going to get is a user account control message asking you, are you sure to allow the following program to make changes to the computer? And of course, you say yes. And you also do need to be the local administrator on the machine to be able to install. And the first thing you get is a little informational box. Now, there could be a little lag time from the time you kick it off. It looks like nothing's happening, and then all of a sudden, this little box right here will pop up and let you know that, yes, something is going on. You will then get this screen, and notice it's called the Installation Center screen. All of these blue words here are hyperlinks, and you can hit those and get more information about what's going on. Notice there's an Upgrade Advisor here, System Configuration Center, and all kinds of information out here. You will actually scroll down on this screen and hit Next to get here. And notice you can choose to do a SQL Server standalone installation, a failover cluster installation. You can add a node to a failover cluster, or you can upgrade from 2005, 2008, or 2008 release 2. We're going to choose the server standalone installation. So choose that one. You go to this screen. It's going to do some setup rules, and hopefully you will pass all of those. If not, just do what it says. Then you'll get a chance to enter your product key, and you will be using a free edition. You can just specify that by clicking right here, and then come down here and click Next. That will take you to this screen. This is your licensing terms. You can agree to this, read all of this stuff, and scroll down. You can also choose to send usage data to Microsoft. It helps them help to find better solutions for SQL Server in the future. After that, you'll go to Product Update screen, and if you're connected to the Internet, it will automatically try to download the latest product updates and install those with your installation. You can let it do that or skip scan. I did skip scan here to make it go faster, but in the real world, you'll probably want to allow that to go. Then you'll click Next here, and you will get your install setup files. And SQL Server is going to install some things, and here you can see that I canceled the scan for product updates. And so we skipped all of this, but it is installing the setup files on my machine. Once that's done, I click Next again. We go to another rule check where it's trying to identify problems that might occur on the installation, and failures will have to be corrected. I didn't see any failures. I very rarely see those. If you see any, you will see instructions on what to do to help them. Then notice you'll get an operation complete. Notice I had six pass, zero failed, one warning. It didn't like a setting on my Windows firewall, but I'm not worried about that right now. I'm on a private network, and I'm just trying to get a class to run and make sure we're all on the same page. So we should be good there. Next, what kind of setup am I doing? Do I want to set up SQL Server feature installation? Notice I can set up the server database engine, analysis services, reporting services, integration services, and others. Or do I just want to install all features using default values? And I do not. I took the server feature installation. Then this window is real interesting. This is where I can choose exactly what I want to put on. I click Database Engine Services, put a check there, and then Management Tools, put a check there. And that is what it looks like after I checked. Notice I checked Database Engine, I checked Management Tools Basic, and it clicked Management Tools Complete for me. And then I was ready to go on from there. And we'll just leave everything else just like it is. Get some installation rules checked there. Then we get our instance configuration. We're going to install this as a default instance. If you already have SQL Server on your machine, you will do a named instance, and we'll see them down here. But since we don't, we'll just go in. It'll go on as MSSQL Server. I left that that way, and I left the instance root directory at the default as well. Then it says, OK, it's checking my disk space requirements. Notice the green check. I passed. Then it's asking me for service accounts and collation configuration. Collation, don't even go there. Leave it at the defaults. On my service accounts, leave them like this. You can change these in the real world, but for the purposes of the class, just leave them there. Then the database engine configuration, we're going to leave it on Windows Authentication mode. 
We're not going to make any changes on data directories or file stream. And down here for my SQL Server administrators, just click Add Current User. And the administrative account that you're logged in as is given the appropriate permissions as a SQL Server administrator on install. Then you can choose to send Microsoft error information to help them with future additions. That's up to you. You'll get another installation configuration rules check, and then you're ready to install. And you'll click on install right here. It'll take it 20, 25 minutes to paint across and install everything. And then like magic, you'll get this complete and you have successfully installed SQL Server. That's all there is to it. It does take probably 25 to 45 minutes, depending on the RAM on your machine and other factors like humidity. But if you do all that, you'll have the same installation that I have, and we should be able to work just right along with each other, and it should be very beneficial for you. So anyway, that's a quick look at a SQL Server 2012 installation. That one was on Windows 7.